So this is our second lesson on how Antony and Octavian actually came to blows the, the war they ended up fighting and how they drifted towards war again between 34 and 32 BC. In our previous lesson, we looked at um, the treatment of Octavia and how that gave Octavian some cause to blame Mark Antony, the way he was badly treating his, uh, his sister. But more importantly today, we're going to look at the donations of Alexandria. We're going to recall both sides' preparations for the war, understand the mistake Antony made, look at the sources, propaganda, logistics, fleet, quinquiry, it's the warship, beef, orgy, and misogyny, our hatred of women. So, this is the basic thing we're going to do in this lesson. And we're going to look at um, the donations of Alexandria. Mark Antony, after the Parthian debacle, a thing that goes completely and badly wrong in all ways, it's all your fault, is a debacle. So the Parthian campaign is a debacle for Mark Antony. He's humiliated. He fancies himself as the great war leader, the great warlord, the conqueror of the Parthians. It's all gone horribly wrong. He's not been killed, obviously. His army's not being wiped out, but it's a humiliating defeat. From what we can tell from the sources, it looks very much like he falls into quite the depression when he gets back. So I talk about in the white, uh, the white village, drinking heavily, all that sort of thing, waiting for Cleopatra. He appears to be what we'd probably call today clinically depressed. And one of the things that must be bothering him the most, he's got to be aware how all this is going to affect things in Rome. He sent back some letters lying about Parthia, as if it's some sort of a victory. But it's quickly becoming obvious, if you're back in Rome, that no, it's not. It's a defeat, another bad one. And he, and he is going to get the blame for this. Particularly seeing as Octavian is pretty much in control of that half of the empire, including Rome. He's going to be very, very well aware. He's going to make... Octavius is going to use this Parthian defeat to make him look bad. The Romans love military victory, and they dislike, they hate military defeat. Also, during this point, Mark Antony has always, according to the sources, been a heavy drinker. He's become an even heavier drinker, and appears to become something of an alcoholic. So, Mark Antony, after the debacle of Parthia, heads back with Cleopatra back to Alexandria. And it's here that he makes possibly, to many historians, the, the real huge mistake. And that's what Plutarch's first letters. People also began to hate him for what he had done for the children of Alexandria. The children meaning Cleopatra's children. It appeared to be either theatrical and over the top and to show hatred for Rome. He filled the gymnasium, that means a big stadium. He put some platforms made of silver and two thrones made of gold, one for himself, the other for Cleopatra. Thrones, kings sit on thrones. Not Roman senators, not Roman triumvirs, not Roman generals, kings. Having a throne, it's a bad sign. He had his throne for the children. Here's what he does. First, Cleopatra is the queen of Egypt, Cyprus, Libya, and part of Syria. And Caesarian was to rule with her. Secondly, his sons by Cleopatra were to be named kings of kings. To Alexander, he gave Armenia, Media, and Parthia once he was conquered. To the other Ptolemy, he gave Phoenicia, Syria, Cilicia. In this meeting, he displayed his sons in the dress of their kingdom. So the sons of Mark Antony are dressed as foreigners. You see the details of it here. Yeah. The Patris meeting wore the sacred robes of Isis, once called the new Isis. Octavian reported all this to the Senate and was making accusations against Antony before the people hoping to stir up the people of Rome against Antony. Can't have been very difficult. Let's look at the map.
So Mark Antony has this stretch of the Roman Empire as his territory. He's giving it away. He's giving this bit to Cleopatra. He's giving that bit to another daughter, Selene. He's basically giving away chunks of the Roman Empire to his children. So he's setting it up as a king. His, king, his sons and daughters are kings and queens. And he's giving away Roman land, land that Roman soldiers have won with their blood. He is giving it away to foreigners. This is so e he's making it so easy for Octavian back in Rome. So what do you think Octavian's reaction was? He must have been absolutely delighted about all this. Mark Antony is doing the stupidest thing possible. He's giving away Roman land to foreigners. He must have been hugging himself with joy.